You know what's better than a bucket? A tub. You know what's better than a tub? A hot tub. And you know what's even better than a hot tub? A hot tub boat. Complete with a recirculating heating system, lights, speakers, and so much more. This is the most unique way you could possibly relax at the lake, and is made of parts you can find at a hardware store. And I'm gonna show you how I built this thing from start to finish. The only problem is, it doesn't exist yet. Let's get to work. So my idea for this all started when I came across this video of a company in Switzerland that rents out wood-burning hot tub boats. Clearly having hot tub boats is the main benefit of being Swiss, although I also hear the flag is a big plus. But we don't even need to go to Europe to see what the hype's all about because it turns out there's a hot tub boat company right here in the US, and that's Yacht Tubs in Portland, Oregon, who invited me out to check out the boats and get some inspiration for building my own. Peter. What's up? The hot tub. So what we got here is an 18 foot integrated soaking hot tub that you take and captain yourself out on the Willamette River today. This is what happens when you order a hot spring off Uber Eats. <laughs> For fast heating, we use a propane on-demand hot water system. Heaters on board take care of the rest from there. So the water is heated on shore using propane and then pumped into the boat. And then you have kind of a recirculating system in here to keep that water hot throughout your ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Have you ever had a boat capsize? No, we cannot capsize this thing. <laughs> I have tried. With me behind the wheel, anything's possible. So let's say, hypothetically, that somebody, let's just say a goofy blonde dude from Wyoming with the physique of an ostrich, <laughs> wanted to build a DIY hot tub boat. What advice would you have for that individual? I would say good luck, and I hope you have a lot of engineering school uh, in your background and a lot of patience. It would be dumb for him to try. Oh, I mean, that'd be super dumb. I mean, this is just hypothetical. I mean, what kind of idiot would try to do something like that? All right, who's ready to build a hot tub boat? Whoa. In order to build a hot tub boat, we need two things, a hot tub and a boat. I don't know how to build either of those, but I figure a good place to start would be with the tub. I considered building one out of wood. I considered buying some kind of bathtub to use. I even considered just filling up a boat with hot water and calling it good. But after thinking it through, there was one obvious winner. Ooh, this is perfect. Now that's a hot tub, y'all. This right here is a stock tank. These things are usually used to feed and water cows or horses or exotic Mongolian yaks. But this one is gonna be used to build the dumbest thing you've seen on YouTube this week. This stock tank is gonna make an amazing hot tub, but there's one obvious problem. I mean, aside from someone as clueless as me building this thing, that's the biggest problem of all. This thing's gonna be submerged in a crazy cold lake, but is made of metal. Heat's gonna rush out of this thing faster than the tech bros are rushing to get the iPhone 15. So my solution to that problem is to buy another stock tank. I never once imagined that livestock feeding troughs would end up being one of the major expenses in my life, but here we are. And the second tub is just slightly smaller than the first, so the plan is to put insulation in the gap between the two, and then our hot tub will actually stay hot. So I traced out the shape of the bottom of the stock tank onto this two inch thick foam, and cut out the circle with a jigsaw, which is kind of like cutting a birthday cake with a chainsaw, but whatever. Then I packed the pieces into the bottom, and it was set. I didn't even know they made foam that thick. This thing's gonna be better insulated than an obese walrus. Next, I got to work on cutting up some slightly thinner one inch foam, which I'd use to insulate the side. I wrapped one layer around the inside of the big tank and another around the outside of the small tank. And with the help of some friends, the two tubs fit together perfectly. And to finish off the insulation, I'm just going through and blasting the gap with a spray foam. This is the forbidden whipped cream right here. <laughs> Better hide it from your grandma when she goes making pumpkin pies. I'm telling ya. And now this thing's pretty much just a big old cooler. I feel like a beverage at a summer function right now. And then, for reasons I can't explain, I used the dullest butter knife I could find to cut off the excess foam. And now that we have our tub all done, it's time to turn it into a hot tub. So I've seen a lot of designs floating around for wood burning hot tubs, and honestly, I'm not feeling it. I mean, you've got fire, you've got a boat. That's like the Hindenburg and Titanic combined, man. You're just asking for disaster with that one. So instead, we're gonna use gas. And by gas, I mean propane. But this ain't gonna be the only gas flowing through this thing, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So here's the plan. I'm gonna start off by putting an inlet in the top and an outlet in the bottom. At first I was gonna drill holes through the wall and put these little faucets going through it, but then I realized that that's totally unnecessary and I was just overcomplicating things as usual. Instead, I can just run a pipe along the inside of the tank down to the bottom for the outlet and put one a little closer to the top for the inlet. Now, let's talk about my system that'll be used to heat up the water and turn it into sweet, sweet hot tub sauce. From the outlet, we're gonna attach a hose that connects to this sediment filter. And this filter is gonna keep all the nasties from circulating back through. You know, dirt, bugs, my belly button lint. Not that I have any of that, but 
If I did, this thing would catch it. And then we're gonna attach this little 12 volt water pump, which is almost exactly like the one I used in my tiny home. This thing pumps four gallons per minute, which is concerning because our tub is 390 gallons, but we'll see how that pans out in a bit. I'm hopeful, okay? And the pump is powered by this 12 volt marine battery, which will also be the power source for our boat motor we'll attach later on. And I'm putting the switch in the circuit so we can easily turn the pump on and off. And then we have the centerpiece of the entire project. The only thing making this a hot tub and not just a cold, disappointing bath with friends. This is a propane water heater, and it's gonna harness the power of a good old American cookout to make our water nice and toasty. And from the heater, the water's gonna flow right back up to the inlet, and our loop is complete. And just like that, we have a working hot tub, maybe. And then all that was left to do is test it out. So once the boat's complete and we're at the lake, I'll just take this little hose off and put it in the lake water to fill it up. But for the sake of our test, I'll just put it in this little bin with a garden hose going into it, and that'll simulate a lake. All right, the propane is on, the heater's set, the battery's charged, let's do this. Oh, she's cooking. You can hear the flame in there. Water's coming out at 108. That probably sounds deadly for those of you who don't speak American. So this one right here controls the heat, and this one right here controls the flow. That's one of the big problems with a lot of wood-burning hot tubs. You just can't regulate them as well as you can with propane. Oh, that feels so good. That is some hot tub sauce if I've ever felt it. And surprisingly, this big old stock tank only took a couple hours to fill up. And now that it's full, I'll screw this hose back into the tub and let it circulate. Oh, this is like actually hot, y'all. We are straight up chilling right now or warming, <laughs> the opposite of chilling. So I got this little floating shark thermometer, and right now, Sharky says we're right around 100. That is not bad, considering how long this water's been sitting in here. So this tub took just over two hours to fill up, which I thought was bad, but then I looked it up, and even normal hot tubs take three to eight hours to heat up, so I think we're doing just fine. It just takes so much energy for water to heat up. It has a really high specific heat, but I'm really happy with this. I'm just learning as I go. Gotta say, I don't have a ton of experience building cow trough hot tubs. I I'd imagine not many do. I'm just trying not to slaughter this build. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a cow joke. Also, you might notice this isn't my normal building space. I actually came out to Oregon to build this because it got too dang cold in Wyoming. My buddy Michael's letting me build everything in his backyard. Uh, it kind of feels like we're just hanging out in a bathtub together, but... Looks like we have a working hot tub. Now it's on to the boat. So originally I was gonna buy a big fishing boat or pontoon and then put the hot tub on that, but the problem with this is weight. Water is crazy heavy, dumb thick. It's over eight pounds a gallon, which means our hot tub will weigh over 3,000 pounds when filled up. Trying to balance that kind of weight on a boat just sounds like an absolute logistical nightmare. So I have another solution, submerging our hot tub in the water. This can of water represents our hot tub and above water, it's actually pretty heavy. This little thing probably weighs a few pounds, but when I put it in the water, the density inside the can is equal to the density outside the can, so the weight of the water cancels out. All that's left is the weight of the can itself, but the force of buoyancy keeps that afloat. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with the hot tub. Since it'll be sitting in the water, all we really need to do is build a raft around the top of the hot tub that'll keep it stable and hold all the supplies. And it'll provide some cool deck space. The plan is to make two sections of a square raft that fit around the tub just like so, and can be disconnected when not in use for easy transport. So I cut some two by fours to frame the raft. And I'm designing the raft in a way such that these 27 gallon storage bins will fit perfectly in the square holes. And I got the idea to do it this way after watching this video by the Outdoor Boys where they also use storage bins to build a sick raft. They probably won't see this because them boys are outside as advertised, but if y'all do, thanks for the inspiration. The plan is to have four bins on this side and four bins on this side. It'll kind of be like a pontoon, but like a pontoon from Ohio. I've actually never been there, but this seems like something that would come out of it. And then I got to work on screwing together all the pieces on the first side and cut out the two by fours for the other side before assembling them into a masterpiece but it wasn't done quite yet. Y'all already know how much I like triangles. See what I did there? I combined y'all and already. Y'all ready. I'm an innovator. So I made these boards with two 45 degree angles to go in each corner of the center square. And that'll help give the hot tub a nice big hug so it fits together even more nicely and it'll add some stability to the frame. Did you guys know I can cut a board in half just by looking at it? I couldn't believe it at first either. 
but then I saw it with my own eyes. And just like that, the wrap framing was complete, so I moved the pieces onto cinder blocks to apply the sauce. And now that the frame's done, I'm covering it in a waterproofing sauce, because clearly this raft is gonna get wet. And this is just a stain and poly mix that'll keep the wood from rotting and give it a really nice color. And just to make sure our raft is as stable as it can possibly be, I'm putting these little braces in all the 90 degree joints. And luckily these are small enough that they don't interfere at all with the storage bins. And now we need a way to connect the two sides of the raft, so what I'm doing is drilling two holes in each side for these carriage bolts. And these will stay set in one side of the wood with the help of some epoxy and can be attached or detached from the other side with the help of a wing nut. This will create a strong connection that won't require any special tools. So now we have these two six foot by 10 foot pieces that can be easily transported on a trailer. Now we need to build the deck because without a deck, this isn't really a raft. It's just a big old clump of two by fours that kind of look like a stop sign. But we're not going all Huckleberry Finn with this raft. No, no, no. We have technology. And by technology, I mean aisle 25 of Home Depot because that's where I got my decking. These are composite deck boards and they're neither cheap nor light, but they're totally waterproof and feel super good to walk on. So I'd say they're worth it. And it's not like they have to cover that much area. So I used my David ruler to measure out everything. And then I chopped all the pieces and started putting together the deck. And I'm fastening these down with deck screws, which I guess are their own deal. Why does a deck have its own genre of screw? This world's getting too complicated. I'm telling you. And I'm using this little countersink drill bit that'll ensure all the heads of the screws are flush with the deck. And then I screwed and screwed and screwed some more until our deck was semi-complete. All that was left is to trace out the bottom of the tub onto foam and use that to trace out the exact shape onto the deck. Then I used a jigsaw to cut it out. There we go. Got that BDE big deck energy. And the great thing about this is it could also just be used as a regular hot tub deck. Throw it up on some cinder blocks, slap some boards on the side, put a little stairway next to it, and you're chillin'. So we tested out the hot tub once that was finished, so it only seems right to test out the raft now that it's finished. So I threw it on a trailer and hauled it out to this beautiful mountain lake to see if it floats or not. So the plan is to drag the pieces halfway into the water and then put the bins under them and then push it the rest of the way into the water, put the bins on the other side, repeat, repeat, and then we can connect them. And to my absolute delight, our raft actually worked. You guys have no idea how excited and surprised I am that this thing floats. I just thought this was way too big of an idea and there is no way this would happen, but here we are. Who would have thought $10 storage bins can float so well? Also, can we just talk about how beautiful Oregon is this time of year? I mean, we got some snow-capped mountains, we got the fall colors. Dude, call me Humpty Dumpty because I am having a great fall. And I don't mean off this raft, it's actually pretty stable. I'm so happy to see this thing float, but we still have a lot to do, so let's get back to work. So functionally, everything worked. That's surprising. But if we took it to the lake as is, all these hot tub components would just be laying loose on the deck and I'd look like some kind of crazy mad scientist who's trying to build the time machine. Actually, I was gonna tell you guys a time travel joke, but you didn't like it. So to make things look a little more classy, I'm building two storage compartments that'll double as seats. And I'm thinking we'll make them in the shape of an L because I don't take L's, I build them. Let's get to work. So I built my first frame out of two by twos and covered it in half inch plywood. One to keep it simple. As for the lid, I built a frame that fits just perfectly in the lip and lined the top with these pine planks. It's like a nice little treasure chest. And then I hit copy and paste for the other side. And just to get things a little more even and smooth, I'll do a quick pass with the sander. Sander? I hardly even know her. Got him. And now, sauce. To keep everything waterproof, I'm applying a stain and poly two-in-one mix. For the body of each compartment, I'm using American chestnut. And for the lids, I'm using this lighter colored pecan. Or pecan. Or pecan. I don't know, there's gonna be some southern lady in the comments critiquing my pronunciation. Go see what she calls it. And I'm gonna attach these compartments using bolts and these T-nuts. And these get hammered into the underside of the decking so the bins can be easily taken on or off with bolts. So on this side right here, we're gonna be putting in the propane tank, the water pump, and the heater. I was gonna put it on the inside, but it's essentially just an open flame so it wouldn't be able to breathe, and that would just be super sketchy. Plus, this knob right here is how you control the heat, and it would be nice to be able to control that from the hot tub right here. And I cut a hole for the on-off switch. 
and on the other side I'm putting in the battery which is about as heavy as everything on the first side combined so it should be balanced. And to get the wiring from one compartment to the other I spray painted some P-TEX tubing that it'll run through and drilled holes on each side. Then I added these 2x4s to the back so the motor has something to clamp onto. Speaking of the motor, this absolute monstrosity of a watercraft is going to be propelled by this tiny little electric trolling motor. It's not going to be a very fast ride but it's gonna be a ride. And as one last little detail, I'm wrapping the hoses that go to the hot tub in this pipe insulation. And that'll just help a little bit with heat retention. I'm not sure how I ended up in the only career where you have to worry about both heat retention and audience retention, but here we are. And there we go. Functionally, this should be totally finished. Put this all together out on the water, and I'd say there's a solid 8% chance everything works as intended. But you can't spell function without fun. As a quote by Gandhi, probably. So I have a couple add-ons to make this thing even more of a vibe. First off, I got the absolute craziest sound system you could possibly imagine for this thing. It may not be very big, but it's waterproof and packs a punch. And I have a couple of these smart LED strips. I'm gonna put one of them around the perimeter of the deck, and the other is gonna go in the hot tub because it's waterproof. And the boat itself might be heavy, but these aren't. They're light. And as this build was coming to a finish, so was my time in Oregon. So I loaded up everything on a trailer and headed back home to Wyoming for our final test. But this test would actually be doubling as a very special surprise. If you've watched any of my videos, you know my friend Isaac. He's like a brother to me and has been so insanely supportive of everything I've done, especially on YouTube. He started helping me out with videos before I even had a thousand subs, and whether we were surviving overnight on a frozen island or racing kayaks down a ski hill, he believed in me even more than I believed in myself, and there's no way this channel would be what it is without him. Anyways, Isaac just got engaged to the girl of his dreams, Serenity, who's so sweet and I'm super happy for them. So as an engagement gift, I'm going to surprise them with a relaxing evening in a hot tub boat, which is either going to be the absolute coolest or worst engagement present ever. I'm not even sure this thing's going to float if I'm being honest here. It might just sink straight to the bottom of the lake. Titanic part two, baby. Gosh, I'm such a good friend. Back in Wyoming a state that has half the population of Rhode Island despite being 80 times its size. So we have several hours before Isaac and Serenity are supposed to show up, so let's get this thing out on the water and get it heating up. So I got to work on assembling the pieces like it was build a boat workshop. In order to use this thing, there's definitely some assembly required, but that's okay. And now you can see the tub is sticking up and super buoyant, and that's just because of the shape of it and all the foam I put in there. But now we're gonna start filling it with water, and as it fills with water, it'll slowly sink into the water until the lip catches on the raft, and we'll be set to sail. Right off the bat, she's coming out at over 100 degrees. Crazy. And everything worked just as planned, and the tub slowly lowered into place. Isaac and Serenity, I am sure you're wondering why I've gathered you here today. Well, I imagine it has something to do with this abomination floating back here. <laughs> it I does have something to do with this abomination, and this abomination is actually a hot tub boat. Oh, wow, that's cool. Here, I was thinking we were about to have one hell of a crawfish boil. <laughs> so I hear that the two of you recently got engaged, and while most people might get you something actually useful for marriage, like a kitchen appliance, I instead spent the last month of my life building a giant hot tub boat for you two to spend a relaxing evening in. Oh, wow. That's so <laughs> romantic. The only catch is this is literally the first time it's ever been on the water, ever. Oh, so you've never done like a test run or anything like that? My brother in Christ, you are the test run. <laughs> Oh, heck yeah, this is, this is awesome. Ah, that's really nice. How's it feel? Oh, it feels so good. Set sail me, boy. It actually works. Later. Later, dude. See ya. Look at those lovebirds setting off into the moonlight. What do you think, baby? Sick. This is so cool. This camera is so we're actually going pretty quick, <laughs> surprisingly quick. And Isaac's idea of quick must be two miles per hour because that's about as fast as it goes. Look at that view. Ah! What, oh, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think it was, a giant mosquito? Something just scraped the bottom. It was that Loch Ness monster. Flying zoing scoob! Some Bigfoot is watching us from the woods like, well, humans just bumped it up a notch on stupid <laughs> things I've seen them do. <laughs> David is a family channel, we almost forgot. I know. Do stupid shit things. Stupid shit things. <laughs> oh, 